Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to be looking at how to set up the Zap proxy with your browser. Now before we actually get started with setting it up, we really need a proxy is. Now of course that might be some that that could have been something that was on your mind. What exactly is a proxy because uh, Zap stands for Z attack proxy. So Zap is essentially proxy. So what exactly is a proxy? Well, the standard definition of a proxy is an authority that represents uh, someone else. Okay. Now in term, in, in the terms of, uh, networking, computer networking, a proxy is an intermediary for requests and responses from clients seeking re resources from another server. All right. So let me explain that one more time. A proxy is an intermediary for requests and responses from clients seeking resources from another server. All right. So you, the, the key word there is intermediary and requests and responses. All right. So let me just give you an example to explain uh, what a proxy is. So uh, let's say you have your browser opened up and you want to connect to google.com. All right. So you type in google.com in the URL, uh, in, in, in the URL bar and, uh, you hit enter. So you send the request to google.com or the Google, uh, the Google server, uh, of course, through your DNS. And, uh, once your request reaches the server, Google then sends you a, a response, which contains the web page. And uh, that goes to your browser and it displays the web page google.com. Now, the whole idea of Zap is to be an intermediary between your browser and the server. All right. Now, rem remember what I'm saying here, the browser and the server, because if we are intercepting or acting as an intermediary between the server and the browser directly, that means we're going to be uh, essentially what's going to hap be happening is that all data is going to be transferred through Zap, which is not what we want. So essentially the browser and Zap are in communication with each other. All right. So what's happening here is that Zap is intercepting the special traffic that comes through port 80 or your, your HTTP traffic. So the, the, the only the traffic coming through port 80 and then it is filtered through port 8080, which is uh, the port that will set the proxy to of course, using the local host. Now, why do we use port 8080? Well, it's because port 8080 is the most commonly used port for setting up proxies. It's, it's considered to be a very good standard. Now, if you already have your port 8080 taken up by another service, you can also use whatever other port that you're not using. The one thing that you'd need to remember is that the, uh, the settings, the proxy settings on your browser and the proxy settings on Zap have to be the same. All right. For there to be a connection. All right. So Zap is essentially the intermediary. So you, it allows you to monitor the traffic again, uh, it acts as an intermediary between, uh, four re responses and requests so, so that you can actually, uh, get an idea of what traffic is being sent to and from the browser to the web server. All right. And then obviously, uh, with an advanced tool like Zap, you can then uh, go on and manipulate the data to get different responses and you get the basic idea. Okay, so uh, when it comes down to configuring the browser uh, with the proxy, it's really very simple. Now I'm still running uh, Kali Linux over here, and it's really very simple to get started with configuring the proxy on your browser. So this will work on Windows, it'll work on Linux, and it'll work on uh, Google Chrome and on Firefox. All right, so to do it manually, open up your browser. I'm using Firefox here, and you want to go into your options, which is this little button here, and you want to click on preferences. All right. Once you click on preferences, you want to go into advanced and you want to go into network. And you can see that the first setting here in regards to connection, this will configure how Firefox connects to the internet. You want to hit on settings and you can see that it's going to, uh, it's going to show you that this menu is for configuring proxies to access the internet. So for a manual proxy configuration, we click on the manual proxy configuration here and we can enter our HTTP proxy, which is what, uh, exactly what we're using because remember the traffic is being filtered through port 80. That's the only traffic we want to, uh, we want to be intercepting because you can imagine if we, if we were intercepting traffic that's not in any form HTTP, then we're intercepting traffic that's coming through all the other ports. So remember that. Now, if you're running this on your local machine, then of course it is recommended that you use your local host. So your local host can be denoted as the, as the following. So local host, or you can use the IP address 
point zero point one all right and then you specify the port 8080 now of course you can configure this port to whatever you want as long as you also set the same settings in 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 zap all right so for example i can say 8086 i can say 8087 whatever i want it to but it's good practice to leave it as 8080 uh, you can leave this unchecked because we don't want to use the proxy server for all uh, protocols so and then you just hit okay now that's how to do it manually and obviously you can see how uh, how tiresome this can become after a while because if you want to connect to the internet without passing your traffic through the proxy you have to come back into your settings and then disable the proxy and then when you want to start using zap again you then have to enable it so this is a manual way of doing it so i'm going to be showing you how to do it automatically all right and this again will work on google chrome and on firefox so what you want to do is let me just open up a new tab you uh, we want to add an add-on here so I'm just going to open up add-ons now on on Google Chrome. This can be done by going to the Chrome Web uh, Store, I believe. If you just Google for the Chrome Web Store and go to your extensions, you should find it here. So again, same thing for Firefox. We want to search for the extension Foxy Proxy. All right, so Foxy Proxy, that's the extension we want. So I'm just going to hit enter and let's see if we can get any results. This is going to automate the whole process of selecting the proxy uh, on your browser and then uh, finally, we'll be looking at how to set the proxy and how to change it on Zap. All right, so we want to uh, select Foxy Proxy Basic, as you can see here. And uh, as you, it'll give you in its description, Foxy Proxy Basic is a simple on and off proxy switcher. All right, so I'm going to hit install and it's going to start downloading the add-on. So I'm going to give that a few seconds. Please do bear with me. My internet connection isn't the fastest in the world. So we're going to get let that download. All right, so let's give that a few more seconds to download and hopefully it doesn't pause uh, on us. So there we are, download, and it's going to start installing it. And once it's installed, it should come up on this bar right here. All right, so uh, we want to restart the browser now again. So let's restart the browser. It'll probably prompt you to do the same on Chrome, but uh, usually Chrome allows it to launch immediately. All right, so you can see Foxy Proxy exists right over here. Now, let me just open up a new tab and let me open up Foxy Proxy. And by default, it will open up the settings for Foxy Proxy. And do not be worried now. I'll explain how to add our own proxy. Uh, and again, this is a one time setting. So uh, the select mode essentially allows you to select how you want to use Foxy Proxy. And we'll look at that in a second. For now, we want to only focus on uh, on the uh, on adding our own proxies in the proxies tab. We don't want to look at proxy subscriptions and the global settings, but that's something that you could look at if you wanted to. So we want to add a new proxy. So you can right click and add a new proxy or you can add it from the right here. So I'm going to add a new proxy and we want to click on manual proxy configuration and we want to select the server or the IP address or in this case, we can select local host. But to, to be safe, make sure you specify the IP address, which is 127.0.0.1. And we select the port, which is 8080. All right. So uh, for some reason, my keyboard numpad didn't work. So once you've hit that, uh, you want to, you can then hit enter and you've added your proxy and you can also click whether or not you want to enable it. So this is just the default proxy, which you can either keep or remove. And uh, you can right click again and edit this if you want to. And you could have edited that. You could have edited that one to fit uh, and change the settings to, to be the default one. All right. So. Uh, with the default one, you can leave that on. You can now change, you can edit the selection. And uh, when it comes down to proxy details or general, you can add proxy notes. So you can give it a name, like we can call this, um, we can call this zap, just something really simple. And we can select the color uh, to denote uh, the proxy. So I'm going to select a light blue, which is the color of, uh, of zap. So I'm going to hit enter and it's going to be called zap and I can hit close. All right. So once I hit close, we're now good. And once we open that again, we can then select the, uh, we can then select the, uh, the, the zap proxy, uh, from the, from this little drop down menu here. So we can specify to use the proxy 127.0.0.1 on port 8080 for all URLs. That's what we want to do. So we can hit OK and hit close. So that means it's going to be using the, it's using the current uh, proxy now. All right. So what we can do now is we can go into zap and I'm going to show you how to change the proxy for zap. Now, by default, the settings are going to be the same and I'll explain that in a second. So 
open up Zap and you want to go to the top menu right here and uh, you want to go into your options, all right? So you can go into tools and you can go into options, sorry, tools and options. And once you open up options, you want to scroll all the way down into your proxy details, which can be found here. So your local proxy, and uh, you can see that the local proxy is by default set to the local host or the IP that we set, which is 127.0.0.1. So we don't need to change any settings here. Everything is running on the local host. You can maybe just specify the IP address if you get any errors, but it's always safe to leave it as the IP, which is 127.0.0.1 and the port 8080. Remember, if you changed the port or you configured it differently in the browser, make sure to set the same settings right here and then you can hit OK. And once that's done, you're pretty much good to go. So any traffic that you'll be using uh, th that you'll be or any page that you'll be viewing on your browser will be uh, intercepted by the Zap proxy. So we can test that out by going into Firefox and opening up uh, a website like Kali.org here, for example. And as you can see, it's going through the proxy and it's going to prompt you and it's going to tell you that your connection is not secure. So just hit advanced. And uh, if it tells you that this is an invalid certificate, uh, what you can do is, uh, sorry about that. If we open up another website, I think I know what the error is here. So if you open up exploit DB right here, uh, if it tells you that, uh, the connection is insecure, um, we can go back here. Sorry about that. And uh, if we actually go back and, uh, we can see that the, uh, we can add the exception there. So if it gives you the ability to add the exception, for some reason with the Kali website, I couldn't do that. So we can add this site as an exception and hit confirm security exception and it's going to load the page. Now, what uh, when you say uh, Zap is going to act like an intermediary, what do you mean? If you open up Zap right now, you can see that all the traffic is being intercepted by Zap and we can then analyze any of the websites that we vi visited. For example, you can see that we were able to open up exploit.db and immediately we can see a folder called WordPress content, which means that uh, the exploit DB is running on WordPress. So immediately you can see we were able to intercept all of the traffic that is going through the proxy. Now, when we're done with the proxy, it's really very simple. Uh, for some reason, this site didn't work. When we're done with the proxy, all we have to click on is we, we just click on Foxy proxy and we just hit completely disable Foxy proxy and hit close and now we can open up any of the websites that we wanted to and we can browse normally without the traffic uh, without the traffic being intercepted so that is how to set up uh, the proxy uh, uh, the, the zap proxy on your browser whether it be google chrome or firefox and how to con uh, understand uh, how to con correctly configure the proxies whether you're changing the port or the host all right so that is going to be it for this video i'll be seeing you in the next video Thank you.